Welcome to the Raising Boys and Girls podcast. I'm Sissy Goff. I'm David Thomas. And I'm Melissa Trevathan. And we are so glad you've set aside a few minutes to spend with us today. In each episode of this podcast, we'll share some of what we're learning in the work we do with kids and families on a daily basis at Daystar Counseling in Nashville, Tennessee. Our goal is to help you care for the kids in your life with a little more understanding, a little more practical help, and a whole lot of hope. So pull up a chair and join us on this journey from our little yellow house to yours. The Raising Boys and Girls podcast is brought to you in partnership with Minnow. Minnow provides meaningful screen time and shared experiences for families to help you grow in your faith together. Check them out at podcast.gominnow.com. That's podcast.gominnow.com. Kelly Minter is an author, Bible teacher, and podcaster. She is deeply passionate about teaching the Bible and believes it permeates all of life. Kelly speaks around the country and also works closely with Justice and Mercy International in the Amazon jungles of Brazil, as well as the Eastern European country of Moldova. When she's not writing, traveling, or speaking, she enjoys time in her garden, cooking, and being with her friends and family. Kelly, you are, in my book, one of the most sought-after Bible teachers there is. How many books have you written at this point? Oh, I don't know. I seven or eight Bible studies, maybe seven in a few or books. eight yeah. Bible studies. A worship leader. You have how many albums? You're gonna make this sound so much better than it is. No, it's not, it's not no. that great. Yeah, I don't even know a few records, but that's because I came to Nashville to do music. But I haven't done it in a little bit of time. So, I mean, I still sing and play my guitar, but beautifully. And mm-hmm. you're an aunt, yes. which is very important to me. Very exciting for me too. Yes. To how many? Six. Six. Yeah. Wow. And three are right here. Yes. So that's really, really fun. Yes. And what are their ages? Marin is a freshman in high school. And then I've got, let's see, a seventh grader. And then Holland is in second grade, I think. And then the ones here, Will's in fifth grade. Harper is in fourth grade. And then Lily is in preschool. And I don't have favorites, but Lily, <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh, I love that one. She's four, Aww. probably because she's the baby, you know, but, yes. and she's definitely the last. There's nobody else coming after her. And I also got her from scratch because she was born in Tennessee. She was the only one born in Tennessee. Everybody else is <laughs> a Virginia scratch. baby. So I just got her right away. <laughs> and I love absolutely all of them. I adore them all. They're so much fun. Well, you're definitely one of my aunt heroes. I feel like I pattern a lot of my aunting after you. Oh, uh, well- And you saying scratch made me think, too, you have a cookbook. Yeah. Yes. Which is amazing. Yeah, I did a cookbook with. Oh, so fun. Yeah, a place at the table. I wrote it with a Brazilian woman who lives here in Nashville, Regina Pinto, who's an amazing chef. So I was more like the, I don't know, writer of it or something, but she was really the brains and the genius behind it. But it is really fun. It is so fun. I love it. I have it sitting out in my kitchen all the time. Oh, fun. Yeah. And you are a very dear friend to all three of us. Yes. Which is so fun for us to get to have a conversation with you. Well, it's fun for me. I'm so happy. I was getting bored of myself today. So I was happy (laughs) to come over and and hang out. This is fun. Well, we won't be bored of you at all. We're just really excited to get to hang out with you. And can I add to the list of all the things? I was going to say, David, I'm waiting for you to pipe up. In addition to my friend, I too have favorites and she's my favorite neighbor. (laughs) Aww. Yeah. Just live in the same neighborhood. Our houses are like back to back. We are. And my wife can be a bit like a toddler where she wanders off from time to time and I can't find her. And she's always in Kelly's garden. She's an amazing <laughs> so gardener well, too. Yes, Add an that to the gardener. list of great things I she does. I have so many things on the list. Well, I'm glad, that, I'm glad that I'm still a favorite because I've had lots of construction going on and I think it's pretty annoying for everybody around me. So I'm hoping it's going to finish up here soon. So I'm you glad I'm still favorite. on the favorite list. <laughs> you are. Okay, good. Always will be. Good. That's awesome. Well, and me too. Yeah, what do you uh, got? What, how great am I from you? See. Come on, yeah, Melissa. What, what are you? Out of the list. Yeah, no, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I know one. We would add our favorite MC. That you oh, are the MC oh. of our big biggest fundraiser every single yes. year. Well, just that's what I was going to say. You were just going to say that it was on the tip of your tongue, Melissa. <laughs> yes. Well, you guys are my favorites because I've gotten to be in the Amazon jungle with. Two of yes. you, anyway. Yes. And there was actually a toad in the commode, <laughs> which we decided we wanted to write a children's book called There's a yes. Toad in My Commode. We need to get on that. We've we got need to get, to get that. On I heard the uh-huh. biggest scream from Melissa that I, that I, we thought she was like dying. <laughs> and my friend April ran in there and there was a little, little frog in there that had gotten in there. 
Totally. But you said it wasn't little. Go, no, it, it wasn't little. It had a big hop. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, not commode. fun when it's coming out of the commode. <laughs> <laughs> no, never mind. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, my uh, We goodness. laughed a lot. We yeah, did laugh yeah. a lot. Yeah. This was great. Yes, with an organization that is very near and dear to your heart. Yes. Yeah, Justice and Mercy International. Yes. So really fun. So, yes. yeah, it's Daystar and JMI. Those are two of my very, very favorite nonprofits. So I love it. I'm excited. Well, we are so here. excited to be with you. This is yes, so fun for are. us. Well, I guess we'll begin with how do you think parents can help their kids learn to really love scripture, truth? Mm-hmm. I'll have to say this right off the top. I'm not a parent. I'm single. I've always been single. So take this as someone who's just kind of walking beside and is sharing some thoughts, but I don't know what I'm talking about, okay, when it actually comes to parenting. But if I was going to say something from the cheap seats, and I think it's true, is that if we're going to teach our children or those that are around us to love Scripture, we have to love it. Mm -hmm. And that's true about anything. We're not going to pass on something that we don't love to our children. And so we have to love it ourselves. It has to be something that has gripped us and that is exciting for us and that we're passionate about. But I also always go back to Deuteronomy 6, like way back in the Old Testament and such a central passage for those Israelites in the Old Testament where basically they say, talk to your kids and the, the young ones around you. And I do this with my nieces and nephews, but talk to your kids about the truths of God's word while you're putting them to bed at night, during the day, while you're walking or along the road, you know, while you're just whatever you're doing all the time is the idea that we would be sharing with our kids. And so that's something that I just, I think when scripture has rooted in us, it's going to naturally come out of us. I love that that's what you You know, it's not like this moment where we always, I mean, I think there are those times where we go, hey, this is our time Mm -hmm. to really talk about God's word or whatever, but I think it's just going to naturally come out. My niece Harper got in the car the other day and I said, I heard you had two baskets at basketball yesterday. And she goes, I did, but somebody else was the MVP. And you know how I don't like to not get the credit. (laughs) And and I said, and you know, your aunt is very similarly made up. And I said, but do you want to know? What's really important, and I, and it just was this it's launching just natural. Path. Mm-hmm. Now, did she hear any of it? I have no idea. But if <laughs> I continue to do this for the next twenty years, she will eventually hear it, and it'll get yes. down in there. But I told her about my own disappointment earlier in the day in work, and how yeah, I didn't really think I got the credit, but how Christ teaches us to push outward. So it's that kind of yeah. as you're going along, as you're just I going along. That. And yes. of course, she always had a lot of reasons for why our stories were very different, um, but <laughs> <laughs> didn't did quite really? apply. Yeah, oh yeah. That's awesome. Well, that's not exactly, you know, but mm-hmm. but yeah, while we're driving along, yeah. while so we're driving along. I so. can picture that yeah. now. <laughs> oh yeah, that's <laughs> great. I love oh, it. It's good. And you have written how many Bible studies for teenage girls? Three have been turned in to studies for teens, yes. Will you say their names? Because obviously I want people to know about this. So one that just came out is called Encountering God, and it is on the spiritual disciplines. And I'm actually really excited wow. about that for teens because it's yes. never too early to learn about yes. generosity, worship, prayer, solitude, meditation, all of yes. that. Yes, Kelly, I'm so, so excited about that. Yeah, I'm get a copy too. of that. I'm excited about yes. it too. And Y'all go buy that now. <laughs> right yeah. now. Teenage girls. Uh, yes. Well, I'm, I am excited about it because I do think it's going to be, uh, I think it'll be an entry point for people who are new to the Christian faith, but I think it'll also bolster the Christian faith for those who have been believers. And then I have one on the life of Joseph, and I actually mm. really love that for teens too, just because Joseph was a teenager when he got the dreams from the Lord and suffered a lot as a teen and had a yes. lot of family issues mm. and abandonment and Mm -hmm. all of that. And yet Mm -hmm. God uses him greatly. So I think that's another big one for teens. And then I did a study on 2 Corinthians called All Things New, and that was also revised for teens as well. So That's awesome. What do you think for teenagers, what helps them come more alive in their faith and what sometimes even doesn't help? Yeah. Well, I think legalism never helps. Mm, And I guess I grew up with some really, really, really great models of Christian mentors. And then I grew up with some real hardcore legalism. And if I was going to just define that, it would just be sort of the rules of scripture, but without the love and compassion and relationship of Christ, Mm. where you're just trying to check boxes. And, And so that was pretty suffocating for me. 
So I think for me, it's again, it's kind of back to that first question, just seeing people who really love the Lord and they're passionate mm-hmm. about it. And you can see that it's working in their lives and they believe it. Mm-hmm. And I think when I knew that I was cared for by whether it's people in the church that were on staff or just friends of people in the church, when I knew I was cared for, that is what made such a difference for me and made me listen and yes. really lean in. Yeah. So when I knew that, I wanted to hear what those people had to say to me. Yeah. 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 Kelly, as therapists, obviously we talk so much about feelings. It seems at times that for kids, feelings can seem more true than truth, Mm -hmm. especially these days. Yeah. And what would you say to parents who are trying to teach their kids to express their feelings and to also have a foundation of faith that undergirds those feelings? Yeah, that's great. And again, that gets back to a little bit of that you know, when I was growing up, some of the legalism I got was basically your feelings are bad. Mm. Don't listen to your feelings. Push away the feelings that are the bad feelings or the sinful feelings. And, you know, so you kind of get all that. But when it's detached from a relationship with Christ, then that becomes really burdensome. But we know, of course, that Creator God created our feelings. Right. So we go back to creation and we can say that the actual feelings themselves are gifts from God. But when they begin to supplant truth, then that's where we get into a problem. And so there's always that. I mean, I think even as an adult, like I'm still trying to figure out what to do with my feelings all the time, you know, because, (laughs) you know, you have feelings of anger or of fear, Mm -hmm. jealousy, and some are really good in and of themselves. Some become problematic. And so it's like, how do we read our feelings through the lens of scripture? And I do think that that is so important because we know even as adults, our culture is telling us that just go find your truth. And if you can find your truth, Mm -hmm. then, well, you found the answer. Mm. And that is so antithetical to the gospel and to Christ. And yet we don't want to say that what people feel doesn't matter or that it's not significant. So how do we bring out those feelings, but then align them with the truth of Christ and scripture and then allow those feelings also to be redeemed? Truth has to be ultimate. But it's also true that our feelings were created by God. And so how do we bring those to the Lord in a really honest way? Like I said, I feel like I'm still learning how to do this in a lot of ways, but Mm. honest with the Lord about areas where there's still places of emptiness or where there's heaviness or where I'm afraid and not denying them, but also not letting them have the final word and letting Christ have the final word. Yes. So much like the psalmist Mm -hmm. and being open and honest. The Raising Boys and Girls podcast is brought to you in partnership with Minnow. Did you know that Minnow has an award-winning children's Bible? Written by VeggieTales creator Phil Vischer, the Minnow Laugh and Grow Bible for Kids is more than a children's Bible storybook. It's a deep, engaging, and whimsical gospel experience. Each Bible story is vividly illustrated, takes just minutes to read, and includes a family connection to encourage readers to learn, talk, and pray together. Find out more at shop.gomeno.com. That's shop.g-o-m-i-n-n-o.com. There's so many issues today that are harder for parents, but uh, if there's one that you would speak to that's harder for parents today that's maybe different than when you were growing up mm-hmm. and- that was harder for your parents. Well, so that question, to me, I would be so curious to know if anybody has anything different to say than technology. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, I just would love to come up with something more clever, but oh my goodness, not only is it harder to be a parent, and what about being a counselor? I mean, I say to <laughs> Sissy all the time, like we're at dinner, I'm like, I would not be able to do what you're doing uh-huh. right now. As I was even driving here today, I was thinking that the root issues haven't changed at all. Mm. Right, nothing about the root problems of the heart haven't changed. We want to know that we're seen. We want to be valuable. We want to be right. beautiful, or we want to be handsome. Mm-hmm. We want to be known. We want to be accepted. Community. We want to fit in. We want yeah. community. We want to know we're loved unconditionally. We want to have hope. None of those things have changed, but the social media aspect and the technology, I think, just puts a magnifying glass to oh, all yes. of those issues, and it just goes into overdrive. And man, I sometimes wish we could backpedal and take the blessings of technology, but not some of the curses that go alongside of it. So I think that is what is so, so hard and highlights the comparisons. And like I said, I 
I'd love to know if anybody says anything different than that, mm-hmm. because that just seems like, wow, that's exacerbated. So, I mean, and, and again, it gets back to it exacerbates things for adults as well. Right. right. Oh, yes. I mean, I would be off social media so fast if some of just my work, but it need to be on some level. Yes. Uh, because it can be just as difficult for anyone, right? Exhausting. Hmm. Exhausting, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. If you had to say something from your childhood that you wish you could bring back today, or that you wish was still true today, that's different. Well, maybe I would go in reverse here over that. I would have no iPhone. No or iPhone. Or no smartphone. Yes. I really would. That is the one thing that I would, I'm glad I didn't have it. Let me put it yes. that way. Mm-hmm. So if I could bring that forward to today, that would be my big change that I'm thankful for that I didn't have that. That's not probably helpful for people. But, <laughs> no, but, but yes. But maybe I it's- I can't imagine. I cannot imagine. I think it helps us be more compassionate to kids. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, really, to grow up with that kind of pressure. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, oh, yeah. Yeah. And maybe encouraging some it. other really awesome things in its place, which I know yes. just probably takes a ton of time and energy from parents because I know it's got to be the easier thing. I mean, I experienced that when my own, you know, my nieces and nephews come over, you know, it's like, they want to get on the gaming system, you know, which of course I bought. <laughs> you know, right. That's rare. <laughs> right. uh, and they want to watch the movies and everything. And granted, I don't have them 24-7. So I totally get that this is not always possible. But I really do try to do some fun things with them. And I found even when I go over to my brother and his wife's house, and like we did a trivial pursuit night the other night, and there's a kid's version and an adult, like mm-hmm. it's mixed. Oh, wow. And they had so much fun. It was like, give me another question. Give me, okay, we, 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 we want to keep doing this round. Okay. And I bought Clue. Like I started buying these old games from my childhood. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. And, you know, but then I was thinking like, is this a good game? I don't know. Like Harper's like, it's the rope in the library with Mr. You know what I'm like? Okay. Oh, but I forgot not. about, yeah, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were really having a lot of fun getting to the bottom of, you know, who did it and uh, the revolver in the state. Yeah, I'm like, okay, right. well, yeah, let's see. Well, but we really had, you know, oh, that's it's got to be better than Fortnite. I don't know. I, it's good. Yes, yes <laughs> but, that's for sure. But they really do love the board games if you're present with them. And right. that's what I always find, yeah. you know, yes. they're not going to probably do it themselves, but if we'll take the time to sit, and do these games they really enjoy they really yes. enjoy it so i think that presence that one on one presence mm. that i loved as a kid mm-hmm. that kids still love yes if you'll sit and take the time to do it with them yes okay building on clue okay yes let's, yeah, let's stay old school for a few minutes what would you say is something you'd love to bring back from when you were a kid a favorite show a favorite band a favorite book so I, you know, I'm just dating myself crazily, but I really did love the Brady Bunch. That was just a yes. fun one that I liked. Now, don't judge me if there's something really politically incorrect about that show now, because I haven't thought a lot about that. But just, you know, thinking about my childhood, that was fun. And this was, of course, before me, but we loved the I Love Lucy reruns. Oh, and we, yes. I, we still had so much fun. And I've even brought those back. For my nieces and nephews, and again, that kind of thing, like, let's watch this really old show together and making it fun. And they've Mm, loved that. They have. Absolutely loved those shows. Again, if Mm. I'm there with them and we're talking about it and, you know, looking at the goofy things that were part of it. But yeah, I would bring back some of those types of things. I love the Anne of Green Gables series. That's still yes, one of my all-time me too. favorite, favorite, favorites that I think is still relevant today. Which is a little different than Anne with an E. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Very. Yes. Very much so. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. The original for sure. Yes. I'm with you. We talk a lot about seeing parents probably more discouraged mm-hmm. and just feeling like failures more than ever. What kind of hope? would you want to offer parents? Yeah. Well, okay. So first of all, Christ is no less able in this culture. Mm. And I think that, again, I'm saying this from the cheap seats, but I believe it for my nieces and nephews. I believe it for my neighbors. I believe it in my own life, that this culture, as hard as it is, and as much as it feels like an onslaught right now, the truth and the light of the gospel is no less able to pierce that darkness. And he's no less able to encourage parents and to strengthen parents and to equip parents to do what they need to do for their children. 
And then for those who are feeling, I think, discouraged and like failures, and that's where the grace of the gospel comes in. I was looking at this today, actually, out of Zachariah's psalm in Luke's gospel and just the way that he was just so excited and praising God for the redemption that he brought. But he talked about how we would experience the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of sins. And you just see that grace there that's all over that. We are so much in a culture of wanting to measure up and to perform. And if we do all these good things, then our kids should turn out this way, or we should you know, see this kind of success. But when we go back to the gospel, again, it's so much grace. It's just so much grace. And it's not about getting it right. And I have this conversation with my parents who just moved to town, actually. We talk about this. There was a lot of things that weren't right. And there was a lot of missteps and some legalism and some pushing things under the carpet that should not have been pushed under Mm -hmm. the rug. But I think because there was an emphasis on the grace of Christ and they were passionate about the Lord and really were, that that usurped a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so I guess I would just encourage parents to not beat themselves up because there's no help in that ultimately. And again, just bringing those failures and those gaps to the Lord and saying, Lord, this is your show, yeah. right? Because it is. And, <laughs> yes, and it that's is. what I think about. I, I cannot imagine being a parent today, but at the same time, I think, oh, the gospel is no less true. Mm. Yeah. And you offer such hope. Your voice is so powerful there. Mm. Well, it's what I'm believing for my nieces and nephews mm. when I think about some of the brokenness that they're growing up in around them and some of the unique challenges that they're facing that, frankly, I really don't know how I would have done it if I had been in their shoes. And yet I know, though, that the Lord's faithful in all of these places. Yes. Well, if you had a project right now that you wanted to share with us, what would it be? And where can folks find you? I have a Bible teaching podcast called The Cultivate Podcast. And it's a weekly podcast, about 30 minutes of walking through a passage of Scripture or a portion of Scripture. So, yeah, I'm doing that. Honestly, like right now, I am so enjoying just being home a little bit more. So some of my projects are like, I've been cooking more and I've got some house projects going on and things like that. So I'm trying to think, but I know the Encountering God Bible study on the spiritual disciplines, that's probably the biggest thing that I have right now. So it's called Encountering God, Cultivating Habits of Faith Through the Spiritual Disciplines. So it's a Bible study for adults and also for teens. And I am really excited about that because it's a topical study. I think Mm -hmm. people are in this place where they want to go back to some ancient truths Mm. because we are like every day, do you feel like there's a new Mm -hmm. truth that you just have to subscribe to? It's like every day, oh, there's a whole new way of life that we are supposed to subscribe to. And so I think people are going, hey, what has worked for 2000 years? Mm. And they go back to some of those practices. And so I have, I was really excited to spend about a year or so just studying some of those in scripture and yeah. And putting together a Bible study. So I've that got would an be that. idea. To read it. Yeah. How would you like to come to Hope Town to camp and teach some of those teenagers? You know, Melissa, I will come anytime, but I will say I came one year and Melissa sat down with her four pound Bible on her <laughs> <laughs> lap. You could not hear a Mm. pin drop Mm. in that room. And so I can't touch that space, but Mm. I'll help in any way I can as a backup, a backup artist. I would love for you to come. It was phenomenal. I so enjoy it. Well, and my niece was there and she loved it. And then my brother just informed me that my nephew also wants to be there this week, which means I have to take more speaking engagements. So that's what I, (laughs) that's my whole thing. I just, I take speaking engagements and the kids go to camp. So that's what we we God. David, you understand that whole yes, world. I do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll trade off so, some in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. We love to end our time talking about food, one oh, of yeah. our favorite things, something we know you love too with your cookbook, and particularly tacos. Absolutely. And let's just say, hypothetically, you mentioned that amazing building project that's happening in your backyard that you finished that project and then you decided you wanted to invite the three of us over for dinner. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. 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 Absolutely. Because you're a great cook and yes. maybe you serve tacos that night. And what taco would you prepare? What taco would you love? Okay. So what I can prepare you is different than what I would actually go buy because I can't actually make the thing that I love the most. So I'll answer two ways because I love tacos like crazy. 
but I love a breakfast taco. So yes. like the, which we couldn't get in Nashville until recently. So that's been awesome. But like the egg and cheese and all potatoes and all that stuff. So that's what I love. I haven't really made those, but I just love a good ground beef taco. Me that's too. what I would make. And I do it pretty well. So I do I have to well, say, I yeah, think we got it pretty good. I mean, I think we might need to invite ourselves and, and I, Connie. We, we want to see that space and we want to well, be with you. What are you and we like those tacos. <laughs> okay, so. There we go. We can do it. What are you building? I am doing a screened in porch, but with a fireplace on oh, it. Okay. And then they're kind of redoing the main suite in the house. So that was something I never had like a really good master. And so they're making that for me right now, which I'm really excited about. Can't wait yeah, to I've see been it. talking to David and Connie about it for a while. It's so, so beautiful, you all. Oh, I bet it. it is. Well, I can't wait to see This it. is part of my shift from being on the road for so long, for like 25 years. And I'm like, no, I now am going to park it and write more probably. Mm. And I'm in seminary, so I'm studying a lot and reading a lot. So this will be a great space for that, I think. As you were talking, I was thinking, I mean, I was thinking about a lot of things, but thinking, Kelly, I don't know that there is anyone that the three of us could invite to be on the podcast whose voice we trust probably oh. more. Oh. I mean, just hearing when Melissa asked that question spiritually for parents, mm. I just think, Man, I mean, I feel that so personally as your mm. friend. I just have always trusted your voice so much. And even thinking about, we were sitting here a minute ago, I was thinking it was two years ago, about this time that you were with, Melissa was there and a group of us around my mom mm -hmm. in her last few days. And oh, you man. praying over my mom and just, gosh, I just trust your voice and trust mm. your heart. And then that you're the person that we asked to MC evening in December, that Daystar, we trust your voice. And of course, we would want you to be here and share in truth with parents just feels like such a gift to us. And just hope you know how much the three of us really, mm -hmm. really value and trust and love you. So thank well, you for being here with us. Can I throw in just yes, one last please. thing? And your sense of humor. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. You you uh -huh. have us laughing at evening December. Oh, and, yes, and, you do. Uh, that's, but always, that's you have so a funny. great sense of humor. Well, just behind the scenes for that is so funny. The producer, who we all love, the producer of Evening in December, he writes out jokes for me every single year. And Every single year I read them and I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to do those jokes. <laughs> like I'm not good. But every year he's got a whole list of those jokes, like just all fresh. I'm like, still not going to do any of those, <laughs> any of those jokes. <laughs> no, it's so fun. Well, I feel the same way about all of you. And, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited to be here. And just the hope that Daystar brings, it is such a blessing. And it was, it's always been a blessing to me, but now having, my own nieces and nephews in mm. the community that are benefiting, it just really drives home the importance of this work and in a, the importance of a podcast like this. Mm. So thanks for letting me have the privilege to be to be here. You're the Thank best. You. We're so grateful. So much. Thank you. The Raising Boys and Girls podcast is brought to you in partnership with Minnow. Minnow helps you make screen time meaningful for your family with shows kids love and values parents trust. Check them out at podcast.gomino.com. That's podcast.gominno.com. It's our joy to bring the experience and insight we gain through our work beyond the walls of the Daystar House. Join us next time for more help and hope as you continue your journey of raising boys and girls.